Hi guys, welcome back to another video. I have been using the new Oxygen OS 11.0.8.8 for more than a week now and I came across few seriously annoying issues with the latest update which I will be discussing later in today's video and we'll also be focusing on the issues that the users reported after the update. I tried to spend some more time than usual in testing this latest build so that I can come up with a precise conclusion and that's the reason behind dropping this video a bit late than expected. But along with the cons, the good news is we can see some improvements done in some areas as well. Let's have a look into them so that you can ultimately decide whether you should go for the update or not. And if you have already updated, then what are the possible ways to overcome the issues? In this video, we'll mainly be talking about the battery, network, camera, proximity sensor, performance and some other bugs that comes with the latest build of OxenOS. So watch the video till the end. And if you are new or didn't subscribe to our channel yet, please hit the subscribe button and support the channel. Let's start with the pros of the update. The issue with navigation gestures that many users including me were facing after the last update got reduced a lot with this build. Though I faced the same issue couple of times with the new build, but it's much better than before. Coming to a camera section. The stuttering issue that we noticed with the last build while recording video at 4K 60fps got reduced with this latest build. The next thing that I noticed is the image captured with the front camera are much better than before and the performance of the rear camera has also improved especially when it comes to low light photography. I did a comparison between the pics taken in a manually controlled dark environment with both new and old build that is Oxygen OS 11.0.8.8 and Oxygen OS 11.0.6.6 and the improvements in the images captured after the latest update are clearly visible. They are more detailed and crisp. Along with that, here are a few samples taken in auto mode before and after the update. They are almost same and the quality is pretty good. Talking about the cons of the latest build, let's start with the charge cycle of the battery. The charging period remains almost the same. It took 29 minutes to reach from 1% to 50% and 74 minutes to reach 100%, which is fine. And if you are facing first charging issue in your device, check whether there is any issue with the charging port, cable or the adapter. Sometimes it may happen due to loose connection or a damaged port. Now talking about the battery life or discharge time, it depends on various factors and it will vary from user to user. And during my daily usage, after the update, I found the backup time is little less than before. Since the Oxygen OS 11.0.6.6 update, I started noticing the degradation in the battery backup and till now it's continuing. Here are two battery discharge cycles based on my usage. During the first cycle with normal usage, I got a screen on time of 6 hours 10 minutes. The nighttime battery discharge was somewhere around 6 to 7 percent. During the second cycle, I did gaming and got a screen on time of 6 hours. After installing the new build, I can notice the minor stuttering of the UI while switching between the dark and bright mode is back. And the app launching time is taking a bit more. But these are very minor issues and can only be found when noticed minutely. And talking about the temperature of the device, during my normal usage it was around 35 degrees. And the temperature went up to 43 degrees while gaming and using the camera. It's nothing serious, as you guys know, while using the camera and playing heavy games, the processor is used excessively, so reaching this temperature is nothing unusual. And the temperature of the device also depends on the ambient temperature. While testing my device, the ambient temperature was somewhere around 30 degrees. And if you are facing heating issues while charging your device or during heavy usage, then check the exact temperature. If the temperature is somewhere around 45 degrees, there is nothing to worry about. This is nothing abnormal. Apart from all this, few users were complaining about the wideband security level. After the update, it's L1 in my device, but if it's not the same in your case, you have to wait for the next update. Coming to gallery application, it still needs some optimization cause no improvements in the loading time can be noticed and few users reported gallery application crash while playing long video directly from the gallery. Though this never happened to me, but in case you are facing anything as such, try clearing the cache and check whether the application is updated or not. Now talking about the two most annoying issues, first one is related to the network. 
just after a few hours of installing the new build in my device. For the first time I noticed the secondary SIM card network was gone and was shown as no SIM card. I restarted the device and it got fixed but just after a while the same thing happened but this time I turned off the phone and took out the SIM tray. Place the SIM cards in the tray properly and inserted them in the phone. Since then, I didn't face any problem till now. This type of issues can happen due to multiple reasons. It may be a hardware issue or a software, but in case you are facing anything as such, try these steps. Hope it will help resolve the issue. And the last one is related to proximity sensor. Some users reported issue with the proximity sensor during long over phone conversations. In case you are facing the issue, you can check whether the sensor is working or not using some third-party applications like proximity sensor test. If it doesn't work properly, to fix this issue you can either check by cleaning the sensor area. This sometimes may even happen due to the dust or dirt or by removing the tempered glass and back cover which sometimes may cause trouble to the sensor. Or the last option is to reset your device which of course gonna erase all the data. After the update, I found the overall performance to be okay. Except the fact that few times while gaming for long hours I noticed some minor lagging. And of course, no traces of color OS can be found as of yet in the OnePlus 8 series device UI. So these are the pros and cons of the latest OTA update. Do let us know in the comment section what issues you are facing in your device after the update. And if you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so that you never miss an update. With that being said, thanks for watching the video. I am Ben, and I gonna catch you in the next one.